So I decided to record a video talking about how I got eight internship offers in three months. First off, I wanna start with saying this is not a brag, this is not a flex. I do not intend for this video to be a flex or a brag. I truly wanna help people. I wanna share my experience in hopes that someone else could take insights or you know find this video useful and they can apply the knowledge or mistakes I made to their own search. I definitely know that there are many people out there who are more deserving, so I'm very grateful for the opportunities I got. So my story started in December 2022. I just got done with finals and I decided it was time for me to start looking for an internship for the next summer. I started applying to two to five jobs every single day. I literally didn't care what the job was. I just looked for data in the title of the job with intern in the back. So it could be data science interns, could be data analytics interns. In fact, some jobs were even business insights interns or software engineering interns. I was literally just looking for a job that could give me some sort of experience within the field I liked at the time. So some time went by and I realized I needed more experience. And the only way I could get experience at the time was through projects, some personal projects. So I went on YouTube and Kaggle and looked for data sets and tutorials on how to do some simple projects and learn more machine learning models and applications or data analysis on some big data sets stuff like that. So I spent a couple weeks doing that and I came out with six or seven projects that were decent and well reported on Kaggle. I decided to publish this project on my website so that I could show employers my work and I read somewhere that this increases trust and you know they can kind of understand your workflow better, increases your chances of being hired. So this is now around late December, early January and I started applying to five to ten jobs at this point. I decided to increase my applications per day because I realized I needed to apply for a lot more jobs to get an internship. My goal was to hit 350 applications by March. And also at this time, I started hearing back from companies. I got a lot of rejections. In fact, it was super, super demotivating at the start. I didn't get a single interview till the first week of January. And I was super excited when I got this interview. It was from a plastic company in Michigan. In fact, I was super excited that I was willing to drive all the way down there just to do the phone screen. So the interview went well, in my opinion, and I didn't hear back from them for a couple weeks. And once I heard back from them, I got rejected. So after being rejected, I was feeling kind of sad, but I was resilient too, and I kept applying, kept pushing myself, kept getting experience, and you know, kept reaching out. In fact, at this time, I reached out to a friend, let's call him Jared, and he gave me my first referral to an insurance company. They were looking for data science interns, and he referred me. So I applied for the job, I got an interview, and this kind of got the ball rolling. At this point, I started getting a lot more interviews, and I got excited, I scheduled them back to back, I took all the interviews that I could, just so I could get more experience. At this point, I was looking for experience over anything. I knew I wasn't gonna be successful in every single interview, but I wanted to learn as much as I could. In fact, after every interview, I tried to ask the interviewer what I could improve on and what I did good. So I took notes too during the interview. I used my iPad and I took a lot of notes because you know there's no harm in taking notes. Eventually, you're gonna have a second interview, maybe a third, or you might work with a company. And those notes help you understand the company better, what you need to do, what they're missing, and how you can fix the problems. So yeah, I, I definitely recommend taking notes. So yeah, now it's about about mid-January and I got into the interview stage where I was researching for all these interviews. In fact, I spent a whole week researching technical interview questions and how to answer interviews, interview concept questions, you know, how to answer interviews smartly with a smart technique. I, I did a lot of interview research and I think this helped me a lot. Another good tip I have is to research the interviewers. So I took time to research each individual interview where I had through LinkedIn or Google or Handshake, whatever. Any resource I could find about the interviewer was helpful to me. I took notes and I listed out questions to ask them personally after the interview. And this helped me out a lot. For example, one of the companies that interviewed me was a credit union company in Nebraska. It was a farmer's credit union company and one of the interviewers used to be a ranch hand back in his day. And I asked him a lot of questions about his experience as a ranch hand and if that helped with uh, his current job as an analyst and he liked the questions. In fact, I was the first one to ask him that question. I was the first person he interviewed who knew that he was a ranch hand and I think that made me stand out. So at this time, the school semester started too. So I had to deal with the added on stress from school on top of my job search stress. Anyway, we start getting into late January and early February and I got second interviews or third interviews from companies, some even panel interviews that lasted two hours long. And I, I was really panicking at this stage because I really didn't want to mess it up. I really was looking to secure the deal and get an internship and you know, accept the first offer I got. So I reached out to my course advisor and asked him if he could give me any tips. And he said, at this point, all you gotta do is be yourself and be honest. They wanna see if you're a right fit for their team and they wanna introduce you to their team. So all you gotta do is be a good person, be honest, 
and fit in with the team. So that's exactly what I did. I continued taking all those interviews. I met teams. I, I spoke to leaders in the field. I spoke to directors of departments and I managed to learn a lot. And during the stage, I learned the most about the companies and the teams and what I would be doing. So yeah, uh, my confidence level increased a lot at this stage and I was feeling more excited for the offer process. So now we get into mid-February and I got my first offer this week. I got an offer from the startup I interviewed with and I was super excited. I was ready to accept it on the spot, but I decided to wait after consulting my brother. He told me to ask for a deadline and you know look over the offer and try to negotiate first before pursuing it. So that's exactly what I did. And to my surprise, a couple days later, I got offers from several other companies. And although this might have been exciting at the time, it was also very stressful because I had to make a decision. So what I did was I emailed every single employer that uh, gave me an offer and I asked for an extension and they all granted me an extension so that I could make a more informed decision. So during this time, I made a pros and cons table with my wife to decide which company I should go with and why. So the three main factors that I took into consideration was experience, how much experience they would give me, and if the experience was what I wanted, and flexibility. This meant I wanted to work remote or hybrid or somewhere remotely close to where I live. And the third one was pay. So obviously as a student, pay is important and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting paid under my value. And I was just looking for something that paid me enough for me to survive and make ends meet. So pay wasn't the biggest factor, but it was also a factor. So a couple weeks went by and I managed to narrow down my selection to just three companies. So those three companies were a startup, a technology agency in Michigan, and also a real estate company that does real estate investment trusts. So the positions were data scientist, data analyst, and also business insights intern. All these three positions fit well with me because the job descriptions were about the same and I would be doing things that I actually liked and wanted to learn more about. And I felt like these positions were the most challenging, which is what I was looking for altogether. So I decided to give these companies a call just to see if they were a right fit for me. I even tried to negotiate a little bit, which helped with my decision later. And I was honest with my, my thought process. I was honest with the offers I got. I told them that I was struggling making this decision and I asked for their opinion. And a lot of them gave me their honest opinion, which helped with my decision later on. So that's definitely something I would recommend. Be honest with them, be straight up with them. Tell them what you're thinking and your thought process so that they can help you with your decision making process. So at this time, I stopped taking interviews completely. I was still getting rejections, by the way. So all those applications I did before, the rejections were still coming in. This was just standard at this point. I don't know why I got these rejections. Maybe my resume wasn't making the cut maybe they found a better candidate it could be a, a hundred reasons but I knew that rejection was just part of the process I accepted it and moved on so after that my wife and I we decided on the startup we chose the startup because it gave us the most experience uh, I like the leaders in the team in fact I spoke to all of them even the director of the department and I really resonated with them so I also got another offer from a nonprofit organization that allowed me to work part-time while studying during the spring semester I took this offer because it allowed me to get more experience while studying and I also wanted to keep busy during my spring semester so I thought it would be a great fit and I decided to take it. So yeah, we've come to the end of this video now and I just want to leave you guys with some takeaways. So overall, this process is a long, tedious process. You're going to be faced with a lot of rejections. It's just part of the process, but it's also a learning process. You learn something new every single day when you apply for jobs. You learn more about the job description. You learn more about yourself. You learn more about what you need to do and how to solve problems. You improve your public speaking skills. You improve your thinking skills and you, know, you get more confident. You ask more questions. So it's a journey. It's a learning process. And I strongly recommend if you're going through this process to just stay resilient, keep your head straight. Rejections are just part of the process. One of the biggest questions I get is about experience. A lot of people don't have previous experience in data science or whatever field they're working with. And my biggest advice for that is just do projects. So projects is a big way of getting experience without having real hands-on experience. You can get real data sets from census data, from UN data, from government data, or from Kaggle. You can just work with any data set you can. Do a project, it could be good or bad, at least you learn something and you can show that you're learning something. In fact, the projects I did last year, you know, back when I started, I, I would do a lot of things differently. I, I would change a lot of things. I, I think differently now, I've learned since then, but I don't regret doing those projects the way I did. It helped direct me, it guided me, and it was a starting step, you know? All you gotta do is just get started. Do something. You could do a tech job on campus. You could do a personal project on the side while studying. You could also help out. Do an unpaid internship with a nonprofit. It's really all about what you're willing to do to get where you wanna be. Also, I just wanna preface that all these steps I took might not be the best for you. Some of them might apply to you and some may not. In fact, Going back now, I would do a lot of things differently and I plan to make a video about what I would do differently if I was starting again now. Also, if you're interested, by the time this video is up, there should be a blog post on my website that goes through all detailed steps of what I recommend doing when you're looking for an internship.
relationship. It also has you know resources and templates and all those things that you could use in your job search. So yeah, feel free to check that out. Also, I know that some of you are international students just like myself, and I feel you. The, the process is very tedious. It's very hard for international students. There's a lot of barriers you gotta go through. I'll definitely make a video very soon on tips and strategies that I use to help me get my internship. I think these tips might help you too, so stay tuned. My hope for this video is to help you guys understand how the process works better and maybe even help some of you get internships. And if this video helps you get an internship, congratulations, I'm proud of you. Feel free to drop a comment down below so we can share and congratulate your success. I wanna end by thanking you guys for watching this video. I appreciate all your time and I hope that you guys got some valuable insights from this video. See you next time.